Guests, dear Toastmasters, friends, welcome to Toastmasters, the world's biggest platform for honing your leadership skills and communication skills. Toastmasters is where leaders are made. We are District 31, and we have a new program for you, which is called Open Heart with District 31. I am Veera Sriram, your Public Relations Manager, and we have successfully completed three episodes, and this is our fourth episode. Tonight on our talk show is a Toastmaster who's been a member of my club, who visits my club on and off, and who's given some fabulous speeches in my club. The importance of this Toastmaster is she has been the architect of this talk show. As I was doing my division speech contest interviews, she found that I had a particular superpower or a skill that may have felt that I was more friendlier to the interviewee and the interview was more fun. And that caught my attention. I said, Toastmaster would like to elaborate on that. And then that was the how this program took place. So without any further ado, let me call upon a Toastmaster who's been a transport from the West Coast to our wonderful East Coast, none other than Toastmaster Lara. Toastmaster Lara, welcome to our talk show. Thank you. Thank you so much for a wonderful introduction too. Thank you, Toastmaster Lara. Toastmaster Lara, we'd like to tell our Toastmasters how your Toastmasters journey had started why, how, when? It started in California. I got my first job working at a corporate office with over 300 employees. Previously, I'd only worked in teams of 12 or less. It was a little daunting to talk to my coworkers because I'm naturally pretty introverted. And I decided I would take a public speaking course. I signed up for a fairly expensive public speaking course at my local university. And by the 10th session of the 10 courses, I still didn't feel really comfortable speaking in front of a group. My instructor kindly noted that some people take the class more than once. And when he saw me wince, because I had remembered how much it costs to do this class, he mentioned that something that would be a little bit more long term and less expensive would be joining a public speaking club like Toastmasters. Coincidentally, my company was starting a corporate Toastmasters club, and our HR department was sponsoring employees to join. I joined that club, and I started out taking out uh, some small roles like the timer, and I wouldn't say that's a small role, but it is a role where you can use a prompt sheet, and you're saying the names of people in the meeting, and you're giving times. You are speaking. And it gave me the opportunity to speak in front of the group, but with some support. And I got to take on some more roles in the club. And I began to do some administrative tasks as well, because I had the ability to reserve conference rooms with my company. And they made me a sergeant at arms and then a secretary. And so being an officer with the club helped me. I realized I developed leadership skills and I had a lot of confidence thanks to this vote of confidence from my club members. It was really nice. Thank you, Tosma Slara. If there were two things that are different from a structured 10 week course that you had taken in a school, what would you say are different in Toastmasters, Tosma Slara? I'd say that Toastmasters is self paced. For instance, with the class, a lot of people were able to get what they needed out of that course. And some people came in with a specific goal. And that happens a bit with my Toastmasters club meetings as well. I've been in public clubs where people will join the club to work on their interview skills, or people might join the club with a specific goal of they are making an actual toast at a wedding. And they'll come to every meeting for two or three months leading up to the wedding because they're the best man or the matron of honor and they'll work on their toast. And it's, it's really wonderful to see somebody go from drafting this toast to 
doing their final presentation for us as well. And I think that with the class, some people came in with the project of I'm making this presentation for work. And after 10 sessions, they've honed their presentation and they're presenting it on a professional level. And with Toastmasters, you can do that, but you can also do something like bring your guitar. And if you're going to have a song that you write for the groom and the bride, as well as a toast, prompting people to raise their glasses in celebration, that can be done as well. And I thought that was really tremendous. Pretty nice, pretty nice, Osmas Rara. The other question that I had was right now, what club are you are you with and what are you doing uh, with the club, Osmas Rara? I'm an, a member of EBSCO Toastmasters and for the next eight days, I am the secretary of the club. <laughs> I helped start the club at EBSCO Toastmasters with the help of the sales department and the sales training team, as well as our HR department, which kindly is sponsoring membership for employees. I started off as a, an officer of the club and had to be president when it first started because I was the only experienced Toastmaster. Now we have a couple dozen of experienced Toastmasters in the company. It's been really fun watching people get used to the meeting format and learning about people in different departments because normally I just talk to people in my own team and because so many different departments are in the club, I'm learning so much more about what my company does as well as the people I work with. That's true. And when was EBSCO Toastmasters chartered, Toastmasters? Our club was chartered March of 2019. Wow. We had our first on-site meeting a week before everything shut down because of the pandemic. Yeah, but, but then even that didn't stop you all, but you all continued to meet every week, Toastmasters? It, it didn't. Amazingly, our club really helped people get used to meeting virtually. Wow. And it became this resource for people to get used to using Microsoft Teams, which is one of the many different virtual conference platforms that people can use. And additionally, some people were in their personal life using Zoom. And so it was a nice crossover of people using Zoom in their personal life and then being able to practice some of the things that they were discovering on Zoom in Microsoft Teams in our meetings and then bringing that to meetings that they were having with their own teams for projects, for work, and then also at the same time, maybe some people were kind of getting sad that they couldn't see people in person in their personal life and so it made them more comfortable with the software so that they could then use Zoom in their personal life to communicate with relatives that they couldn't see in person. Wow, that's a nice experience, Tosmas Lara. Tosmas Lara, now we'll shift gears and now we'll come to another critical question. The impact of Toastmasters on your personal life, professional life, social life, spiritual life. Would you like to throw some light on that? Certainly. As I said, I came from California, and when I joined Toastmasters, I was in California. When my husband got a job in Massachusetts and we moved across the country, I had to start over in a completely new area with which I was unfamiliar. And Toastmasters actually helped me quite a bit because within a month of moving to the North Shore, I went to some local Toastmasters meetings and I immediately connected with people here in the North Shore. I made connections with people who would help me with my job search and was also able to continue to go to Toastmasters meetings and table topics, which is the impromptu section of the meeting, helped me keep my interview skills sharp. While I was interviewing for meetings or interviewing for jobs, the meetings helped me with those interview skills. Also, I got to meet Tom McDonough of Advanced Articulators, and he boosted my confidence by asking me to be an area director. And I was able to go to visit clubs in different area, uh, different parts of the area in order to get to know more people. And Jane Shen, who was also a division director, referred me for the job that I now have. It's It was amazing how much Toastmasters helped me acclimate to New England, as well as make some connections for a job. That's, that's incredible, Toastmasters, Lara. Any difference in the Toastmasters in California, the Toastmasters in Massachusetts? Do you, do you 
have you observed any differences the way we do things and the way they do things or is it the same exact wherever you go feedback forms that were part of a kit that you would get and you could fill out a little comment card and give it to the speaker even though you weren't that person's speech evaluator that seemed to be a lot more common in california than what i see here however at jcc and s toastmasters and marblehead they also had the feedback forms and i haven't seen that in a lot of other clubs in the north shore I did, however, learn about the Yankee gift swap, which is something that is very specific to New England. And I learned about that at the Toastmasters Club of Beverly. And I would not have known what that was until I went to that meeting. That was really fun. Pretty awesome. Thanks a lot for sharing that, Toastmaster Lara. Now, coming to another section is why, in your opinion, should a guest join Toastmasters? What is it that they're going to get from Toastmasters, Toastmasters Lara? I think Toastmasters is really useful and it's flexible if you are someone who's open to learning. And the self-paced education program allows people to progress in their own time. For someone like me, I had to take on some of the listening roles like timer, grammarian, awe counter before I could make a speech. I have been in club meetings where someone will have joined a club and in their first meeting, they make that first speech, which is four to six minutes long. And I think that that flexibility makes it easy for people to use Toastmasters for what they need. If they need it to work on a prepared speech for work, if they need it to work on that wedding toast, or if they need to just be a part of table topics and work on interviewing skills. I think that Toastmasters offers that flexibility. And also each club has a different personality. If you find the right club with the people that can help you get what you need, and you can also contribute to them, it's a really great relationship and a really great learning experience. Pretty awesome, pretty awesome. Thank you, Toastmaster Lara. Now, you also said you were an area director. How was that leadership experience? And has that leadership experience helped in your work, Toastmaster Lara? Definitely. Being an area director is what led Jane Shan to have the faith in recommending me for the job that I have because I had worked with her. And it was my second year being an area director. I was an area director for Tom McDonough first and then for Jane Shen. And because I'd had that experience with Tom, she saw how organized I was and had every confidence that she could refer me to the company where I'm working at right now. Also, I got to see how different clubs were run and I was actually given a little boost of confidence because I was able to help with contests and organizing those speech contests. And it was really fun to put those together and bring in great food and hear hilarious speeches from people that I met in different clubs all at the same time. Would you like to be a division director? Probably sometime this year, (laughs) next year. (laughs) Once everything gets settled at work, I would love to do do it again. I would love to be an area director again because I really liked going to the other club meetings. I just, I really need to be able to go out and do that again. It was so much fun. Pretty awesome. Looking forward for you being a division director pretty soon. (laughs) Thank you. Now, Toastmaster Lara, I'm going to our final segment, which is called Rapid Fire, uh, where it's not as impromptu as table topics. We would expect even a shorter answers, but the questions would be fun and fast. So I would start with Toastmaster Lara, your favorite speech, a historical speech that is, you know, that has always stuck with you. One of my favorite speeches that I've heard was by Deborah Crosby, who gave the speech at her first meeting as a member for JCCNS Toastmasters. She told us about her experience living in a tribe in Africa, and it was both eye-opening and hilarious. The entire club loved it, and it was amazing that it was her first speech and her first meeting as a member. Pretty awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Any leader that inspires you a lot and you want to follow that leader, Toastmaster Lara? I would say Carly Cox because she helped me get my club started. 
started at EBSCO. She was very experienced in putting a club together because she had done so at her company and it was really wonderful. She had Excel forms that I was able to use and she had a lot of tips for using Teams, for using different internal platforms and just ideas on how things can work and how to get a corporate club going. It was amazing and she did all of this before she was even a district leader and she became a club growth director and now she's our program quality director. I find her very inspiring. Absolutely. She is an amazing Toastmaster who's very organized. If if we have to tell someone who's very organized, she's the one and her Excel sheets are district favorite, you know, she has an Excel sheet for scoring for judges, an Excel sheet for area directors, division directors. So I absolutely, I would agree with that. So Smash Lara, one of your speeches that you said, wow, I enjoyed delivering this particular speech. Anything that comes to your mind? A speech that I enjoyed delivering was probably when I had to give some test speeches for evaluation contests. It was interesting because you go in expecting feedback from five different people and it was really wonderful to hear all of these different ways that I could have made my speech more dynamic and at the same time a lot of people pointing out what went well with my speech and just the reaction from the audience was kind of fun and it was nice to be in this environment where I wasn't in the contest so there wasn't really a lot of stress. <laughs> Agree, agree. Nice. To Smashalada, any book that you would want to recommend to our audience? There are a couple of books out there for public speaking, but one that I really liked was Speaking Up Without Freaking Out by Matt Abrams. He's a he's an instructor at Stanford University and he gives 50 different tips for managing anxiety. A lot of times when someone is preparing to give a speech, most of the stress comes from thinking about it and getting anxious before you even step up to a podium or step in front of your camera for Zoom. And he gives a lot of wonderful, useful tips on how to manage that anxiety. And he came up with an acronym for anxiety management protocol or tool. And I came up with one based on his book and it was CAB. And it was counting, just kind of counting inside my head to calm down, like 10, nine, going backwards, ambulating, walking around, getting rid of some of that nervous energy with some physical activity, and then breathing, because breathing really helps you relax and reduces some of your stress. And I remember cab because physically, if I'm in a place and I wanna get out of it, a cab is the best way to get out of it. Pretty awesome. I really like the analogy and also how <laughs> did you relate with the situation? Pretty awesome. So, Smashlar, your favorite food that you would always like to munch? Well, I like to drink lattes and that's really helpful when you need some energy. <laughs> any Any favorite cafe that you like to recommend? Well, I typically we'll go to whatever is closest. I did have a wonderful relationship with the Starbucks on campus at Stanford University. <laughs> and they would call me by my recipe name. That is how wow. familiar I got to them. They would call me soy chai. <laughs> <Pretty awesome. laughs> Sounds good. It was great talking to you, Tosma Salara. Is there anything that you'd like to share with our District 31 audience and our guests? I would recommend people volunteering for table topics if you're not in a club that nominates people to speak at table topics because it's always really fun learning about people and when you give a response to table topics your club gets to learn a little bit more about you so please definitely volunteer for table topics thank you to Smaslara for that nice tip thank you for being on our talk show have a wonderful day to Smaslara. Dear Toastmasters, that was a fun chat with our good friend Toastmaster Lara, who shared a lot about her journey, impact of Toastmasters, and a quick rapid fire. If you would like to see one of your favorite Toastmasters on our talk show, please leave that in our comment section. Please like, share, and subscribe our YouTube channel. Until our next episode, 
please stay safe signing off your public relations manager veera shriram bye bye